Hey guys, this is Jason Matthew from Trinidad and Tobago and welcome to the Biochem GM YouTube channel. Okay, so we have done the the glycolytic reactions and now it's just we are just testing to see if you can remember them. Because for glycolysis you need to know the substrates, you need to know the enzymes, and you need to know the products. But for today, we're just going to name the substrate. So if you think that your glycolysis kung fu is up to mark well then please go right ahead but if you think that you need some practice nothing wrong with that go sharpen your skills check out the videos on youtube so we are naming the substrate and just to warn you all it's not in order so let's get started guys so the first reaction you have a substrate and it's going to glucose 6 phosphate what is this substrate guys and this is supposed to be as a reflex action now hexokinase so what you be thinking that's right, glucose. Now let me ask you a question. Why is it that it's important to convert glucose to glucose 6-phosphate? Well, there are two reasons. One is that by adding phosphate to glucose, you essentially trap the glucose in the cell because glucose is free to, to enter and all leave the cell. But glucose 6-phosphate is trapped in the cell because there are no transporters on the membrane to transport glucose 6-phosphate, so it remains there in the cell. The other reason is that by adding a phosphate group to glucose, it activates the molecule and makes the, and makes the reactions occur. All right, so those are the two things. Now, it's a hexokinase. Can you remember what major class of enzymes hexokinases or any kinases in, that in, in fact will belong to? That's right. They belong to the major class of transferase enzymes. And what a kinase would do is that it's going to take the terminal phosphoryl group of ATP and add it to the substrate, which in this case is glucose, to form glucose 6-phosphate. Now look at this. This is very important. ATP is going to ADP. It is not ATP going to ADP plus PI. That would be incorrect. The, the phosphate that was removed is not released as an organic phosphate, it is attached to the substrate. That is an error I see all the time when I take away marks. So remember, it's ATP going to ADP. The, phos the phosphate that was lost goes to the substrate. Alright, so let's remember that guys. Let's look at the next reaction now. What substrate is being converted to pyruvate by pyruvate kinase guys? That's right, you can either say PEP or phosphoenol pyruvate. Either one is correct. Oh, so now we have two products. So two for the price of one. What is that substrate, guys? That's correct. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. I remember with fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, you have six carbons. And the six carbons is being split into two three-carbon molecules. Glycerate phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate the enzyme catalyzed in the reaction is aldolase let me ask you an additional question so you see this worksheet just keeps on giving bis what does what is the significance of bis why why did we say fructose one six diphosphate you know the difference between bis and di i hope ah very good di and bis means two phosphate that's fine but the difference between di and bis is that when you say bis, it means that if the two phosphates are on two different carbons. So like in the case with fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, one phosphate is on carbons 1 and the other phosphate is on carbon 6. Right? If it was diphosphate, then the two phosphates would have been on the same carbon, which is not the case here. So we say it's fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. So just a little side note there, guys. Next reaction. Alright, so we have 3 phosphoglycerate is the product. Phosphoglycerate kinase is the enzyme. What is the substrate, guys? That is correct. 1, 3, bis phosphoglycerate. And remember, this is the reaction that, that breaks even in glycolysis. Because this is one of the reactions that you're going to be forming ATP. Also, this is an example of substrate level phosphorylation. So let's recap in a few more things here, guys. Moving on. So now we have phosphohexose. I summarized some of you on my note as phosphoglucose mutase. Sorry, 
phosphoglucose isomerase. And the product here is fructose 6-phosphate. What is the substrate, guys? That's right. You're converting an aldose to a ketose. In this case, you're converting glucose 6-phosphate to the ketose fructose 6-phosphate. All right. We have triose phosphate isomerase. And the product is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. What is the substrate? So you should have said DHAP or dihydroxyacetone phosphate. Because when Adolase converted fructose 1,6-bisphosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate, dihydroxyacetone phosphate um, does not continue in glycolysis. That dihydroxyacetone phosphate molecule is converted to glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate. So now you have two molecules of glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which continue in the second phase of glycolysis. So I'm just trying to tie in a few more little pieces of information here to make this experience a really a enjoyable and informative one. Enolase. So you, enolase is converting the substrate to PEP phosphenol pyruvate. What is this substrate, guys? Excellent. 2 phosphoglycerate. And you see that water is being removed, so therefore that type of reaction is a excellent a dehydration reaction. Very good, guys. Now, PFK1. And PFK1 is the second priming reaction of glycolysis. So it is the second so hexokinase reaction was the first priming reaction of glycolysis. It used one ATP molecule. Well, this is the second primary reaction of glycolysis. It uses the second ATP molecule. So we are using two ATP molecules in all in glycolysis. Two ATP molecules are consumed. And this enzyme, PFK1, the product is fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. The substrate is, guys, fructose 6-phosphate. All right? And remember, in terms of regulation, PFK1 is the most important main regulatory enzyme in glycolysis. So always remember that in terms of regulation, PFK1 is the man in glycolysis. Just remember that. All right, so we have a lot happening on this slide. So the substrate, you have two things happening here. You're adding phosphate to it, and you have NAD plus going to NADH. The enzyme is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase, and the product is 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. So therefore, the substrate is, guys, that's right, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now, there are two types of reactions occurring here. First, you are adding a phosphate to glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So what kind of reaction is that? Correct, that's a phosphorylation reaction. Now, the next thing that is taking place is that you are converting NAD plus to NADH plus H plus. Now, by now, you should know what that means. If you're converting NAD plus to NADH plus H plus, that is an oxidation. So you have both oxidation and phosphorylation taking place. In fact, this is the only step in glycolysis where oxidation takes place. All right. Now, this phosphorylation is a different type of phosphorylation as compared to, like, let's say, hexokinase or PFK1. In this case, the phosphate is not coming from ATP. It's coming from inorganic phosphate. And normally, that would have been a very... Um, energetically unfavorable reaction but because we also have this oxidation taking place it makes the reaction favorable overall okay so next reaction we have phosphoglycerate mutase and the product is 2-phosphoglycerate so the substrate is 3-phosphoglycerate I remember I was telling you about phosphoglycerate mutase it's a quite interesting enzyme in that it the 3 phosphoglycerate first is converted to intermediate 2 3 um, bis phosphoglycerate, and that 2 3 BPG um, loses its phosphate on, um, on carbon 3 to give you 2 phosphoglycerate. So that's a side note there. And guys, I hope that you learned something from this. If you did, please like the, the video on YouTube, subscribe to the YouTube channel, become a biochemian with us. And as usual, we, we appreciate your comments. Thank you very much for your support, guys. More videos coming soon. Take care.